Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. David Snelling from Fujitsu, and today we're going to talk about hard computational problems and how to solve them using modern technology. So first of all, let me tell you a little bit about the kinds of problems that people are looking at today. These problems range from, you know, solving the differential equations to looking for new drugs, what's the best way to schedule a thousand people into a shop. These are all big challenging problems that, that today our conventional computing can just simply not address. Even with parallel computing and high performance computing or graphics cards, we have a challenge that our problems grow and they grow in an exponential way. If you look at these curves, you can see that the growth in the compute time is assisted a little bit by going highly parallel, but you still have that computational growth that makes the problems harder and harder to solve with traditional technology. Quantum computing, on the other hand, has a property that the complexity of the problem does not necessarily affect the execution time because the quantum computer has some very special properties. I'll tell you a little bit about how that works. Imagine you're looking for a solution to a problem and you have a choice of whether you're going to use a flashlight or a lantern. Let's go out, we're lost in the forest, and we're trying to find our way. First of all, we have a flashlight. We can use the flashlight to look in one direction, or we can look in another direction, or we can look in yet another direction, but we're tending to look in one direction at a time. Now, if we have multiple flashlights, i.e. if we have a parallel computer, then we can look in many different directions at the same time. But we're still looking with each activity in just one direction. Now, let's go back into the forest again. We're lost again, but this time we have a lantern. Now, the thing about a lantern is it casts light in all directions at once. And with that kind of an image, we can much more easily see where we're going in the forest. That's the difference between classical computing and quantum computing. With quantum computing, we are able to look in all the directions that a problem might go simultaneously. Now, this little example of being lost in the forest is just a two-dimensional problem. So we can shine a flashlight around fairly easily. But the kinds of problems we're looking at are many thousand-dimensional problems. And with a quantum computer, we can look in all those directions simultaneously. One of the classes of problems that is most challenging are those called combinatorial optimization problems. And at Fujitsu, this is the kind of problem that we've taken to focus on primarily using our technology of the digital annealer. So let me tell you what combinatorial optimization is. Basically, it is a simple problem where you know what a solution is good or bad just by looking at it. But there are so many different solutions that it's very difficult and challenging to define the best solution. Let me take the, the classic example of the knapsack problem. You have a knapsack. There's a certain amount of weight you can carry. And you have a, an array of 27, say, items spread out in front of you. What you want to do is you want to pick the best combination of those 27 items to give you the maximum value that you put in your backpack, but not more weight than you can carry. Now, therefore, each item has a value associated with it, and each item has a weight associated with it. If it's just th that simple, then the problem is not that hard to solve. However, these objects that you're putting in your backpack can interact with each other. For example, if you have a diamond and a ring, then you have the value of the diamond or the value of the ring or the value of both of them. But if you have both of them, you might also have the potential value of a diamond ring, which will be more than the sum of the parts. These interactions can work the other way too. Let's say you have among your choice of items, you have a chicken and a fox. It is not recommended that you put both the chicken and the fox in the backpack together. There was a parable about trying to get chickens across the river. You understand where this is going. You cannot put things into the backpack like a chicken and a fox because you'll wind up with a dead chicken and a very messy fox. Now, the question is, why is this problem so hard? Just to give you an idea, this particular problem we've been talking about, 27 items, a fairly small problem, is solvable. Let's say we have a batch of people helping us. We're going to try weighing backpacks at about 1,000 backpacks a second. Okay, we have a lot of people helping us. We're going to weigh 1,000 backpacks a second. It will take us 500 trillion millennia to weigh all the possible combinations of those backpacks. 
This is the kind of problem that we're looking at solving with Fujitsu's digital annealer. When you encode this kind of a knapsack problem on the digital annealer for 27 items, it will solve this problem to a near optimal solution in under half a second. So how does the digital annealer work? If we take a look at this technology, it's conventional technology. It's built out of the same kind of circuits and circuits and transistors and things that your normal supercomputers are made out of. The difference is that it's designed to solve exactly one problem, and that is this combinatorial optimization problem. It uses an algorithm called simulated annealing. Now, simulated annealing is based on the idea of annealing steel. And that is that you want the steel to cool down slowly so that all the molecules line up correctly and give you a very strong solution. In simulated annealing, we do the same thing, only the temperature is a metaphor for a probability distribution of how we pick our next solutions as we go searching through this random space of possible solutions. And as we lower the temperature, we get more and more likely to stay with a good solution that we've found than to go looking for another one. However, what can happen is we can get trapped in a local minima. When we're trapped in a local minima, we don't have any way to get the algorithm to find those other better solutions. Now, in real quantum computing, there's a property called quantum tunneling that allows the energy system to move from one of these local minima to another local minima at a lower energy or possibly even to the global minimum energy. Now, what we've done with the digital annealer is we've implemented in the hardware a kind of a mimic of that quantum tunneling capability. So first of all, we detect automatically on the hardware that the system has reached a minimum of some sort and not finding any better solutions. At that point, we then bump this metaphorical temperature back up again within the algorithm and start searching again. We remember where that formula, that solution was, because it might be the best one we have so far. And then continue to search in the energy space to find a better minimum. So in that sense, the digital annealer mimics or is inspired by, we say, the property of quantum tunneling. Another property of quantum computing is called the superpositioning. It's the ability of you know, Schrodinger's cat to be both dead and alive at the same time, or in the case of quantum bits called qubits, to be both zero and one at the same time. This is what gives quantum computing its huge computational capability. So for example, if I have a quantum memory of just four bits, then when I perform a computation on those four bits, I actually perform a computation on all 16 possible combinations. So every time you add a quantum bit to a, uh, to a quantum computer, you double its performance capabilities. So what we've been inspired by this concept of superpositioning in the digital annealer to create a system on a chip that creates a huge amount of parallel computation while solving simulated annealing. So for example, our 8,000-bit chip operates uh, in a way in which it allows us to look at 8,000 new solutions simultaneously. When we combine that with the fact that the chip itself is also pipelined, we are looking at 130,000 different potential solutions simultaneously. If we try and compare that to traditional computing, you would have to have 130,000 cores to get the same kind of performance on simulated annealing. Now, one of the things that you get another challenge is the ability for these computational activities to share information. Now, if we look at quantum computing again, another property is called quantum entanglement. This is the ability of two quantum particles to share information about their origins, no matter how far apart they are. And they're sort of linked to each other through this entanglement property. Now, what we've done on the digital annealer is we have built the technology in such a way that all of these parallel activities are equally connected to all of the other parallel activities, and therefore, we can pass information from one to another in the space of a couple of cycles. If we compare that to traditional supercomputing, to get information even from one process on a single chip to another process on that chip can be hundreds of thousands of cycles. And if the process you want to communicate is on another node, then it's tens to hundreds of thousands of cycles in order to just pass that information. With the digital annealer, because of its highly compact structure on a single chip, we're able to communicate within a couple of cycles. 
that greatly enables this ability to do the quantum tunneling type proper computation. So the digital annealer, just to recap, is a very highly parallel device built with standard technology. Again, it doesn't need magnetic shielding or you know, the kinds of low temperatures necessary for true quantum computing. And yet it solves these problems, in many cases, up to 10,000 times faster than conventional computing. Now, one of the things that people want to know is how do we engage with our customers in trying to solve these problems? Now, at Fujitsu, we have a general practice of engaging with customers in a co-creation process. And this is never more true than it is with the digital annealer. Typically what happens with the digital annealer is you have a computational problem to solve. You may or may not know that it's a problem suited to the digital annealer. So we will come in with our, our engineers and scientists or whatever we need, business people mostly, to understand the nature of the client's problem. Once we've had a, a couple of sessions with them and identify that the problem in question is in fact a combinatorial optimization problem, then we engage with the client to discover, first of all, can this problem be cast in what we call our quadratic unconstrained binary optimization problem, or QBO for short. If we can then get the technical solution, which is to create the problem in a form suitable for computation on the digital annealer, we're then able to take that computational environment and use it to solve the customer's problem. The other thing we do in these proof of value exercises is engage with the client, not just to look at for the operational needs, but to also look at the business needs that the solution will address. And we build a business case. Then that way, the customer has all the information they need to go to their management to justify the exploration of this kind of a solution. Once we've done that, then we're ready to take the solution into an operational phase. So Fujitsu is not sitting still with the digital annealer. We released our first system back in about 2017 with a thousand bit chip. We've now upgraded to a 8,000 bit chip, which the technology is using today in daily operational activities. But we're shortly going to be releasing what we call a, a, a large scale solver system. Now it's a system that composes both a software layer and a hardware layer, but it allows us to build problems that encompass up to 100,000 bits. Now these are problems that heretofore have not been addressable by any kind of computational capability. So what we're looking at is a roadmap from today into the future where combinatorial optimization problems are easily addressed by the technology brought to you by Fujitsu in the form of a digital annealer. Now hand over to my colleague to discuss some of these use cases in detail. Thank you, Dave. Hello, everyone. My name is Thierry Kahan, and I am the AI and analytics practice leader at Fujitsu North America. And we are thrilled that you've joined us for today's session. I'm safely speaking to you from a studio in New York, and now that Dave has introduced Fujitsu's innovative approach to quantum-inspired optimization, leveraging the digital annealer, let's take a look at how this digital annealer performs in real-world projects, where we are helping our clients using it to solve their problems today. Some of the exciting work we are currently doing with prominent visionary companies includes examples like inventory routing optimization to enhance the timeliness of deliveries from warehouses to retail locations, last mile delivery optimization to reduce the number of vans and resources needed for a given workload, order picking route optimization, which is relevant in a buy online, pick up in store environment, and vehicle routing optimization for very large fleets. The retail sector has usually been at the tail end of innovation and technology, even leading retailers. However, that has changed as a result of COVID-19, as retailers now have invested at an accelerated pace in advanced technologies to provide predictive recommendations and enable faster action, because anything less than real time isn't fast enough anymore. Today, I'm going to talk about the work we've been doing with Toyota one of Fujitsu's premier clients to illustrate how the digital annealer could help take your retail supply chain to the next level of optimization. Earlier this year, Fujitsu and Toyota conducted a joint project to optimize Toyota's complex distribution and supply chain for automotive parts in the US. 
and we leveraged Fujitsu's quantum-inspired digital annealer optimization solution. The objective of the trial was to quickly determine the route with the lowest distribution cost for millions of potential candidates for procuring these parts from hundreds of suppliers and delivering them through several transit warehouses to dozens of factories. The results of this trial were very, very positive. First of all, the application of the large-scale digital annealer and some new solving techniques made it possible to calculate a new route within 30 minutes, which is quite fast, leading to the potential for significant overall cost reduction. Secondly, our simulations using the newly discovered routes proved that this method would reduce cost by approximately 2 to 5 percent compared to conventional methods. The project was executed in three separate optimization steps, leveraging the digital annealer. The first step was pallet loading, the second one parts collection, and the third one focused on the entire process. In the first step for pallet loading, when parts are transported from warehouses to assembly plants, they are first loaded onto pallets. The objective there is ideally each truck should carry a similar amount of cargo in terms of weight. It is important to ensure that the types and number of parts reflect what is necessary to maintain production. But maintaining the same weight between pallets and minimizing pallet numbers is also important. The digital annealer was successful in instantly providing answers for optimal pallet loading under these constraints. In the second part, focused on parts collection, trucks need to collect parts from suppliers and transport them to warehouses. With hundreds of suppliers and dozens of trucks, the number of potential routes is almost infinite. The objective there is to find which route is the most efficient and the shortest, and the digital annealer helped optimize these routes. By reducing both the distances traveled and the number of trucks needed, the digital annealer helped solve a range of issues, such as reducing the CO2 levels and also the time lost due to a lack of drivers. And then in the final step, we focused on the entire process. Transporting car parts involves making many decisions about collection, transportation between warehouses, shipping to assembly plants, and direct transportation from supplier to plant in certain cases. The objective here is to find the one option that keeps costs the lowest out of all possible permutations. The distribution costs were calculated based on multiple variables, including the number of trucks, total travel distance, and the amount of work done in sorting the packaged parts. The many trade-offs to be made included transit warehouses that allow for more efficiency but add costs to sort the parts, and the direct transportation, which does not involve a sorting cost, but it requires a higher number of trucks and drivers. We modeled all of these real-world scenarios to calculate the most optimal solution using the digital annealer. And when there are hundreds of suppliers and multiple warehouses and factories, there are many million potential routes, requiring the million-bit processor to optimize in the required time frame. To succeed with this project, Fujitsu developed two new technologies for reaching better results even faster and more efficiently. In order to apply the digital annealer technology to real-world operations, a new system was developed that incorporates the 1 million bit large-scale problem-solving technology, which was recently developed by Fujitsu, and the following additional two technologies. The global search technology, which searches a wide range of possible solutions while efficiently escaping from a local solution or optimum. And secondly, a dynamic multipoint search technology which dynamically determines starting points for the optimization search based on the current search status and interim results. It finds a global optimum solution from starting multiple points simultaneously. As mentioned earlier, this project was viewed as a solid success by Toyota, and we are continuing to work with them on applying the digital annealer to optimize their operations. Thank you very much for joining us today. We hope this has been useful and welcome follow-ups if you would like to know more about Fujitsu's digital annealer or provide your feedback on any of the topics we discussed today. You can do so by clicking the schedule a meeting or request more information button located on the Fujitsu virtual booth page. We very much look forward to hearing from you. And again, thank you very much for coming.